Hey everyone, welcome back to Me and MS. My name is Michael. Uh, thanks for joining this week. Uh, this week I want to talk about one of the side effects of MS. Um, there's not, you know, a lot of MS side effects that I would call painful, at least for me. You know, obviously everything I uh, do have, you know, is annoying uh, of not being able to walk, right? And, uh, you know, everything else is more or less annoying. I'm generally able to, to function. But the one painful thing I have is called trigeminal neuralgia. Um, so soon after my last attack in 2014, um, I had this pain in the left side of uh, my mouth, um, you know, that would come and go. Um, high amounts of sugar uh, and salt seemed to set it off. Uh, but I went to the dentist and they checked it out and said it looked fine, didn't have a cavity or anything like that. Um, but, uh, but so luckily I had a, uh, appointment with my neurologist scheduled for soon after that. And when I described what was going on, he pretty quickly, uh, diagnosed it as trigeminal neurologia. Um, he checked my MRIs, recent MRIs and saw the location of, uh, a lesion in my brain, uh, that must've been putting pressure on the trigeminal nerve. So to back up and explain what TN trigeminal neurologia is. Uh, trigeminal neurology affects the trigeminal nerve, which comes from your brain uh, down the side of your face and kind of branches out and ends in the gums and, and cheek area here. And the neurology is when the nerve is perturbed. It's an extremely painful, paralyzing electric shock in your face uh, and gum area, and it's pretty uncontrollable when it's happening. Um, you just have to ride it out. It usually lasts a minute to, to two minutes, but the cause could be from a blood vessel putting pressure on the nerve, or in the case of MS, a lesion putting pressure on the nerve in your brain, uh, or also, you know, lack of, of myelin around the nerve, um, you know, in, in MS, which is like all your nerves, why they don't work, and why some people do have neuropathy uh, elsewhere in their, in their body and in their legs particularly. Uh, but TN seems to be a, a, well, I'll tell you, it is a especially painful, version of that being in your face. As far as what can set it off, uh, talking has set off pain in my face. You know, I would, I would talk and feel like, and sound like I had some sort of, uh, of lisp thing going on. Um, the act of eating, just moving your, your mouth and your gums. You know, even I've had, when it's been particularly bad, a gust of wind can set it off, brushing your teeth in the wrong way. You know, I even now I have to be uh, sometimes careful if, if I had like a little little shocks to uh, to not set it off more, um, but you know even uh, even swallowing has set it off for me when it during an attack it's just only added to it. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it's estimated that about three percent of of MS patients suffer from trigeminal neuralgia, um, which is statistically significant. As probably I think it's about 0.03 percent of the general population suffer from it. So to treat it, my doctor originally prescribed gabapentin, uh, which um, is a common um, prescription for people with, with neuropathy and uh, neuro pain. And gabapentin mostly controlled it, but I would have to take a few a day. And towards the end of uh, you know the before I needed a new one, it, I did seem to have uh, more of a chance of setting it off. I remember just being out to dinner with my parents once and uh, and taking a sip of a, of a Manhattan or something and just totally just had just paralyzed my face and just could not move for a couple of minutes while I wrote it out and, and took gabapentin to, to calm it down. So soon after gabapentin didn't seem to totally control it, uh, my doctor prescribed 200 megs of carb yeah, carbamazepine, which I believe was taken twice a day. Uh, and uh, uh, this mostly, you know, kept things under control uh, for a bit, but it did leave me feeling tired a lot because uh, I had to take it, you know, uh, in the morning and also in the afternoon in conjunction with Baclofen, uh, which is a low grade muscle relaxer to keep my spasticity and my legs under control. So taking those together in the afternoon was, was bad for, for my energy and, and being able to keep up at keep keep up at work and stop from nodding off. I mean, yes, it was the afternoon, so um, but this just added to uh, that difficulty. So we upped that to 300 milligrams once a day, taken before bed, um, which is great. As it, you know, it kind of puts me to, helps me fall asleep and I don't have to deal with those initial side effects and just kind of sleep them off. Um, so I've been taking 300 daily for about uh, six-ish years or so. 
um, and it keeps it under control mostly. Um, however, wine can still set it off, uh, sugary drinks and some alcohol, um, you know, like, like especially bourbon, just the sugars of, of the wood aging. Um, but it's not a guaranteed uh, thing. Um, you know, there are times where my mouth is, is, is better, um, but it, I do notice it can be at its worst when I do to go to the dentist um, and, uh, you know, really and clean my mouth out. I'll admit I'm bad at flossing, which uh, might help it. I think, I think, you know, who knows? My own theory is the nerve gets exposed to the outside world a little more when it's, uh, when it's you know, a few months after you've had a last good dental cleaning. Um, but I have been using a water pick in the shower uh, for about the last uh, three or four months. And so that, that has really helped keep my mouth clean and, um, and kept the pain down. So although I now have it fairly well controlled um, to an occasional uh, kind of uh, blip of, of pain, um, you know, like a, a quick little, little shock if I have something sweet or, um, you know, if that I had that and then I, I shaved my face and, and moved up and that, that can set it, set it off. Um, there still can be times where the uncontrollable intense intensity of the, that initial shock that I uh, had to go through um, while being diagnosed um, can still happen. You know, I, I hope, you know, it's one of those things where I, with, you know, you kind of don't realize that because you don't have the side effects as much anymore because you're on the medication. You're like, oh, well, maybe I, I am good. Well, it turns out I'm not. Uh, even just last week, uh, you know, I, I, I accidentally woke up on a Saturday morning and took an extra carbamazepine. So about six, seven hours later from the one I took the night before. Um, and this really having so much in my system, um, really just, just tired me out for the day, uh, snoozing a lot, uh, taking a lot of naps. Uh, when the problem arose, I was trying to get back on my regular schedule of taking carbamazepine at night. And I think there were, you know, there were several hours of, of non-coverage as it were. And, uh, you know, when I was eating in the afternoon, a, a snack and kind of stretched my mouth open to, to take that, it just really hit me and, and really just, I, again, like paralyzed my face for, for a minute or two while I, while I wrote it out. This subsided and I was able to take another pill, which, which calmed it down. Um, but the next day, you know, still being off course when I had taken, uh, the meds, um, maybe just overloaded with more and it was kind of, you know, uh, getting me back down to, to being centered. Um, I felt my face still felt weird. Um, you know, I, I, uh, just taking a big sneeze at my desk at around 11 AM and it really just knocked me again, just paralyzed me for a minute or two while I, while I wrote it out, um, the, the shocks and a. Uh, you know, kind of di dissipated from there. Um, even then, that afternoon, um, I kind of just just forgot and kind of pinched my nose to, to itch it, and that set it off for uh, a minute or two as well. So I took that nights a little earlier, you know, at nine ish rather than uh, the typical bedtime of, of between ten and eleven, um, and then we were we were back on track and and good to go from there. So going forward to control it, I'll continue to take carbamazepine. So at 300, I'm still on the lower end of the daily spectrum, but I hope I don't have to take more because um, when I have taken more, you know, I've occasionally taken 400 to calm things down. Um, that kind of knocks me on my butt too, uh, as I'm, I'm getting used to it. There's also a few procedures possible that insurance, um, you know, has a harder time dealing with and wants you to do step theory in order to get to uh, like a cyber knife where they go in and my doctor described it as snipping the nerve and, uh, you know, so you don't feel the nerve. It doesn't really affect the rest of the face, how that operates, but uh, it snips the nerve and you don't feel it for, uh, you know, at least uh, like five to 10 years, I think. Um, there's also something of going in through the back of the ear to the nerve and uh, I think uh, some sort of balloon thing that uh, helps with the pressure that's being put on the nerve. But I hope I can stick to the 300. Uh, once a day it's it's not that hard to do and uh it's now my my uh condition is mostly tolerable you know there might be a a, a a time or two where it reminds me that it's still there but it's it is tolerable so i hope i don't have to check in with you again having another attack uh and that it doesn't be become worse for the for the rest of my life so thanks for watching and i'll catch you next week thanks